Hello friends, looking at current affairs for 22nd April. The news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 13. We'll look at them in detail. The first news, why force people to get Aadhaar? Supreme Court asks center. So this is the Supreme Court hearing the case on Aadhaar being made mandatory. So earlier Supreme Court had already stated in October 2015 that this was an order of a constitutional bench of the Supreme Court led by then Chief Justice of India, H.L. Dattu. It has said that voluntary use of Aadhaar in welfare schemes is allowed. It should not be made compulsory. So only purely voluntary use is allowed. But then after that, we have seen that the Aadhaar Act of 2016 also has been passed. This is the Act, Aadhaar's tar Targeted Delivery of Financial and Other Subsidies, Benefits and Services Act of 2016. So after this, this has been passed. But then this is also challenged in the Supreme Court because it has been passed as a money bill. So this was a huge controversy which arose. So this itself is challenged in the Supreme Court petition filed by former Union Minister Mr. Jairam Ramesh. Then after that we have seen recently also Supreme Court had stated that Aadhaar's voluntary use is there for welfare schemes but for non-welfare activities like filing returns Aadhaar can be made mandatory. But now the Supreme Court is asking why is it being, mandate, being made mandatory for PAN card etc. too. So it says Aadhaar Act itself does not make obtaining Aadhaar mandatory. So why is this being taken ahead with? The government argues that there are many fake pans. So to ensure that if Aadhaar linkage is there, there will be no such fake pan cards or multiple pan cards being issued. So this will look into the matter. So that is the reason why the government has made it mandatory. But the Supreme Court is hearing the legality of this matter. So this is the whole issue. The next news item is ensure safety of Kashmiris. Home Minister tells the states. So this is after the recent incident of threats being going forth against Kashmiri students in Rajasthan and UP particularly. The Home Minister has Mr. Rajnath Singh. He has made the statement that Kashmiris are respectable citizens of India and the state should ensure their safety at any cost. This is there. The next is government plans home delivery of petrol. So this is government is exploring the possibility that like LPG cylinders, how they are home delivered, even petrol, all petroleum products should be home delivered. So you don't have to go to the petrol pumps. It would be there. Pre-booking would be there and it should come at your doorstep. Because recently there is also a, a demand coming and put forth that petrol pumps should remain shut on Sundays. So the government said that it was not in favor of this idea as well. So this is the news coming forth. Even for running generators, you don't need to go to the nearest petrol pump. The diesel as such too will be provided at your doorstep as such. Then next is flights from Shimla set to take off from April 27th. So this is regarding the Jubbar Hatti airport in Shimla. So this had its air services stalled and now after a gap of four years, air services will be relaunched from here. So this is under the Udan scheme. Ude Desh Ka Aam Nagrik scheme. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi would be here on a one-day visit to inaugurate it. So this is given to Indian Airlines subsidiary Air Alliance. So it will resume operations now. So we have already discussed about the Udan scheme and how allocation has been done to five airlines as such. So this is the news regarding that. So this is the Shimla Airport, tabletop Shimla Airport. So this is among the 70 airports shortlisted under the Udan project. So you can see, so this will be subsidized as we know. This is part of the regional connectivity scheme. So airfare would be 2,500 per ticket for one hour journey as has been mandated. So rest would be provided as subsidy by the government. So this is the regional connectivity scheme too. So this is to bring air travel within the reach of common men. So the airlines would be subsidized to fly at domestic airports with limited connectivity. So this is there, the cap of 2,500 per hour as such is it. Then state government and airport operators will contribute to this, towards the scheme as well. This you can see first flight will be taking off now. So 50% of the seats will have a cap of this 2500. Rest will be at market based prices. Right. So this is the whole Udan scheme. The next is Navy test fires land attack variant of Brahmos missile. So Brahmos missile which has been jointly developed by India and Russia. So this is based on the Russian missiles. You can see P-800 Onyx and Yakhont missiles. So this missile has a range presently of 290 kilometers. And it is so because under the missile technology control regime, you cannot have missiles more than 300 kilometers which country, with countries which are not under it. So now presently India has also been made a member of MTCR. So we have already become a member here. NSG membership is still pending, but this we have already achieved. So 
this was one of the four organizations groupings in which we wanted membership so they, after being member of mtcr now we are also planning to develop the brahmos missile with an extended range of 450 kilometers so this is also underway plus brahmos missile also is planned to be provided to third countries as well so we can sell it to third countries also so this is the objective presently the news is that the supersonic cruise missile brahmos supersonic means traveling at the speed of more than sound sonic means sound so that is the supersonic missile so this cruise missile cruise missile means it's not a ballistic missile this is a cruise missile it can cruise over so it is guided so this brahmos supersonic cruise missile it is having the c variant as such so navy also has the c variant now what we are looking forward to anti ship variant as it's called so it would attack uh, on the sea anti ship variant now a land variant is also been developed so this is the news a test firing has been done of this land variant of brahmos supersonic cruise missile so this was the first test firing so this is regarding the brahmos missile the details given here so you can see supersonic means mac 2.8 is its speed so mac 1 means sonic so this is more than the speed of sound then it has fire and forget capabilities so you can fire and then it will be guided towards the target so that is fire and forget capabilities so this is a we have agreed to sell brahmos missile to friendly third world world countries also so, so we are looking forward to exporting brahmos to various countries here then this is regarding mtcr missile technology control regime so now india is also a member earlier there were 34 states part of it so india has also got the membership here so this is one of the four nuclear regimes as i said india wants to be part of so one is mtcr which we have already acquired nsg for which we are trying and the other two groups are australia group and vasenar group so arrange one the vasenar arrangement and australia group also we want to be members these are nuclear regimes controlling the nuclear technology so this mtcr what it does it places restrictions on proliferation of rockets and unmanned aerial vehicles capable of delivering a payload of at least 500 kg to a range of at least 300 km so we had to stay within 300 km because we were not part of mtcr so russia had this obligation so that is why it had it kept the brahmos range as 290 km so it has applied for membership and it has received it in 2016 so earlier the blockade was here that italy was raising objections with italy we have the italian marines case which we discussed yesterday so after that case got resolved now uh, australia got membership as well so this is the case china is not a member here mtcr has no chinese membership then next is perform modi tells civil servants so it was on the occasion of civil services day which is held every year on 21st april so this day we have the civil services uh, uh, prime ministers awards of excellence in public administration also given so this date has been selected because this was the date in 1947 when sardar vallabhbhai patel addressed the first batch of petitioners of all india administrative service training school in delhi so this is the civil services day it is observed presently prime minister narendra modi he said that anonymity is the greatest strength of civil services anonymity basically means that civil servants have to be anonymous because it is the minister who functions the civil servants are behind the ministers and they have to stay anonymous this it's he is saying that this is a greatest strength so this is one of the view points that anonymity means you do, you don't have the authority you are not taking the final decision you are only guiding as a civil servant the minister takes the final decision so the onus lies on the minister whether it's good or bad so you stay anonymous so that keeps you, you no know, protects you from any allegations as well so that is why it is called anonymity as a greatest strength but then the thing which is been highlighted here is use of social media so when social media is used to the extent that civil servants also come out in the limelight so then the principle of anonymity gets you know hazy so this is what is been spoken of by prime minister narendra modi then next he said that he assured civil servants that he would stand by them if they took decisions with an honest intention and in public interest so sometimes this also happens that in a decision which has been taken if it has some repercussions later the civil servant is blamed so he says that if it is an honest intention which is behind the decision then he would stand by them so there was the recent example of even the coal ministry secretary so the secretary there was also having allegations against him because of the coal scam so all the civil servants had come up in his 
in in his protection so this is also a point in context so civil servants they may take decisions then if there are there are accusations coming later then there will be apprehension in decision making and that would result in policy paralysis to as we say that if decisions are not taken because of the repercussions so every single step if you think a lot and before taking then there will be no action as such so this is the point then next he said that sooner the attitude of the government would change from regulator to an enabler the faster the challenge of competition would turn into an opportunity so we are an enabler he says that the private sector can function where it does best we have to be enablers as government we have to be regulator not not a regulator trying to control but an enabler facilitating so that is there so that this is what he is saying the performance part must come from civil servants the political will he has and transformation will come when people's participation is also there so this is one, one last statement which he is giving next is india south korea inc pact on artillery guns so this is the agreement two agreements have been signed between india and south korea one is an agreement between the two private companies so this is a manufacturing ag agreement to build artillery guns these are K9 Vajrati self-propelled artillery guns. So this will be uh, developed for the Indian Army. So this is a manufacturing agreement, private agreement. Another one is an intergovernmental agreement for collaboration in shipbuilding. So this is under the special partnership, special sector strategic partnership, which India and South Korea have entered in. So these were the two agreements. The next is. Supreme Court to hear plea alleging killings by BSF personnel. So this is a case of alleged torture, rape and extrajudicial killings by BSF personnel in the border areas of West Bengal. So this case has been heard by the Supreme Court. It, the plea is also challenging constitutional validity of section 46 of BSF Act. So this Border Security Force Act provides that the situations in which BSF, some situations in which BSF personnel can be tried by security force court means BSF courts as such. So this is also being challenged as such. Why they would not come under the Supreme Court. Then next is, center does not care for widows, says Supreme Court. So Supreme Court had asked the government to look into the recommendations by, given by the National Commission for Women and it has to give directions to improve the conditions of widows. But then action has not been taken by the government and this is again being pointed out by the Supreme Court using a stern statement saying that, saying that the government does not do what it should be doing and then when we say anything, when the Supreme Court or judiciary says anything, then you say that uh, why, the, why the judiciary is trying to run the government. So this has been a taunt coming forth from the bench too. So the government has been asked uh, that within four weeks it has to provide directions now. Next is Kohinoor not in our jurisdiction, Supreme Court. So this is a petition which has come before the Supreme Court in which they are, it has been asked that the Kohinoor diamond, which is there with the UK now, so this should come back. So we, the Supreme Court says that we cannot give directions to UK. This is within, not within our jurisdiction. The government has said that we are taking actions to make sure that the Kohinoor comes back. The British East India Company had actually confiscated the Kohinoor diamond. This is the 108 carat diamond from the boy king of Punjab, Maharaja Dulip Singh in 1849 after the Anglo-Sikh wars in which the Sikh kingdom was, uh, was taken over. So this was then presented to the British monarch Queen Alexandra. So this stays with the Britishers. So India, UK, both are signatories of UNESCO Convention on means of prohibiting and preventing illicit import, export and transfer of ownership of cultural property. So this is India's cultural property. It should come back. But then uh, a special agreement actually is required between the two countries. So the government is trying, but nothing has come forth as yet. So we'll have to wait and watch. It's, uh, it's our pride, the Kohinoor diamond which is presently in the British crown. So this is the news. This was also there in news around 15 November. So I will give a link for that video at the end of this video so that you can take a look at it too. In that we have discussed the whole history about the Kohinoor diamond in 5 minutes. So you can see that. Then next is Nepal president to address musk dearth at Puri temple. So this is the Jagannath temple in Puri, Odisha. Here in some of the rituals the kasturi is used so this kasturi is the musk which is obtained from the stags navel and this is provided by nepal so this has not come forth as such since 2002 so now the nepal president who visited the temple he said that he'll make sure 
that this is provided by Nepal government. Next is ease bheem refund process. IT Minister Prasad tells NPCI. So this was during the meeting, the second meeting on digital payments, payments, a review meeting, which was headed by IT Minister Mr. Prasad, Ravi Shankar Prasad. In this, the point which was raised was that in bheem app, the refund process is time consuming. That is a huge lag. So that is why the government, the ministry has said that NPCI, National Payments Corporation of India, makes sure that the refund mechanism for Bhim, Bharat Interface for Money application, this app is also smoother. So this was a point raised. Even the Aadhaar linkage to bank accounts was highlighted that around 56 crore bank accounts have been linked to Aadhaar of total 97 crore bank accounts. Then another point raised was that Aadhaar penetration is quite low in two states, Assam and Meghalaya, where it is 6% and 9% respectively. So there's work that needs to be done here. And another point highlighted was that banks were interested instructed that they should strengthen the IT infrastructure to deal with rising number of digital payments. So there have been targets also that every bank should have at least 30 Aadhaar biometric machines at every branch and also that 50 lakh such devices should be installed in the current form. So this is again promoting Aadhaar and digital payments. So this is regarding the Bheem app too. So this is the merchant app. We have discussed this also quite often. Aadhaar linkage linked bank accounts can be used here even with a biometric reader as such. So there's no need for smartphone with the user as well. The next is Civil Aviation Ministry to check overbooking by airlines. So this is the last news item. This is actually a case of overbooking which happens with airlines nationally and even abroad. So what is the case is that in airlines, if, the, if all the seats are booked and at the last moment, if there are cancellations, then they cannot be filled. So then those seats fly vacant. Cancellation rates may also be high. So that is why airlines book more than the capacity which they have. So they book more than actually 60%. 60% more booking is done because they're expecting cancellations too. So sometimes it so happens that some passengers who have a confirmed booking, they are denied a seat. So such issues are arising. So this is why civil ministry has, civil aviation ministry has said that we will provide guidelines to airlines that how this can be regulated. They say that we are not going to stop overbooking because overbooking is also essential because then there is no other alternative for flights if at last minute uh, cancellations take place because then those seats would be flying. The aircraft would be flying with those seats vacant. So we'll see what steps would be taken in this matter too. So this is the whole graph also shown of how airlines are booking and how many, what is the denial ratio, that number of people who are denied after being, having confirmed bookings. So this is showing number of passengers denied boarding per lakh. So you can see this is Jet Airways denial rate. That is it. Thank you.